Oh, hello, my fellow roaches. We are back for another episode of the Josh Potter Show. How are we? I am doing so stupendous, as a matter of fact. Real quick, some plugs, because I've had some barn burner of shows. I don't know if the shows have been barn... I mean, every show feels like a barn burner, and the crowd feels electric, and I feel electric... We'll get into a little bit more uh, in a couple of minutes, but still got some shows on the docket coming up here in Florida, June 9th, Tampa Bay Improv, June 10th, Orlando Improv. Those two are my last two big ones for a long, for not a long time, but for a little while. So get out, buy some tickets to those shows. You can get them at my Twitter at J underscore Potter. You can get them on my Instagram at Josh underscore Potter. Just go to the old link tree and you will be all set. On that link tree also, you'll find my Twitch, twitch.tv slash Josh underscore Potter. And uh, you'll also find uh, this YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed to it, Please to be subscribing. Oops, the the music just straight up ended. I thought I was going to fade it out. Nope. Still learning the controls. I went back to my old laptop, as you can see. People love commenting on it. This is this thing is a fucking tank. I'm telling you right now. Uh, Sean, are you back there? I don't even know. Did you go to the bathroom? No. Am I all alone? Oh, okay. I got scared for a second. Hey, I mean, what did you think when I pulled this laptop out? I thought it was before I was born. Honestly, it might be. It might be. It's not from college. I got this like later in life, uh, and uh, I had like a friend give it to me. Like his work was throwing away laptops, and he knew I needed one. <laughs> that was <And> work. <laughs> it was like a work laptop that was like swiped out, and then he like rebuilt it for me. I fuck with the stickers though. Everyone like comments on that. I'm like, yo, where did you get those? Uh, where did you get those? I mean, they're just. Over time, I think one's a bar stool <laughs> sticker. One's from well, they, we've got the Tom Segura stickers on them, of course. Uh, there's one of uh, RPC on there somewhere, and then like yeah, like Homage is a clothing company that uh, I fuck with from time to time. In fact, a lot of people commented on my Toronto Blue Jays yeah. uh, shirt last time. That was a shirt from from Homage. Not that I want to give like free plugs or anything like that, but hey, they they do great shit. Um, Yeah, so this is our soundboard for the time being, and uh, you know what? I don't fucking care, all right? So deal with it. But I do have to switch over sometimes. It blows. Like, I have to come over here and pull this out and get one of these. Idiot! You know? (laughs) Takes a little while for your boy. Being blind and whatnot, but we'll get it. We'll get the hang of it. You know? We'll figure it out. I'm learning the the board, as, as it were at the end of the day. But yeah, so many fun uh, times. I don't think I have anything else to plug other than, yes, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. If if you just watch or if you just listen to this program, nothing's changed for you, but continue to rate, review, and subscribe on the iTunes or wh- whatever you happen to listen to. We found out that I have Google Play. I didn't even know it. Found that out last week. I did, at least. Ashan knew all about it. He knew we had Google Play. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. I had no idea. But just got back from uh, San Diego. I know last uh, episode came out around the time I arrived home. You see, with the road, things are getting going to get weird as far as I've never done a podcast while doing the road at the same time, especially one where I'm kind of on my own where it's just, you know, a Sean and I, but I uh, am am figuring it out and I don't want to tape so far in advance. You see, I don't want to be one of these bankers uh, who's having to tape super far in advance, but it is the nature of the beast for the time being as we're getting up and running over here. And so last week's episode came out with Ryan Sickler. Thank you so much for watching. And if you did, Uh, but that episode came out, you know, on the heels of my return from San Diego, and uh, I didn't get a chance to talk to you about it. Such fun times down in San Diego. We had five shows, uh, and it was much different than my previous times in San Diego, and, and not to say that the shows weren't fun the last m- bunch of times that I did it, but I'll tell you this, Sean, the first time I went to San Diego was in coronavirus, and it mm. was in June times... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if you remember what happened last June. A little something. Uh, yeah. A n- guy put his knee on someone. 
kind of thing happened. Do you remember that whole thing? Wait, the knee? What? I'm, I'm blanking right now. Yeah, it was uh, a police officer, if you recall. He put ah, his knee onto a gentleman. I, and, uh, I'm going to get flag, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sean's not white, so don't think he forgot that because he's ignorant okay he just forgot it because he's got a lot on his mind yeah i got a couple of couple of things that we're doing multiple things not only that we've had to remember quite a few since then i'd imagine and yes. uh you know so all the names get bunched in your head sometimes some of them slip your mind mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. it's just nature of the beast but that all happened around that time so the city had a weird vibe let's just put it that way things were a little tense just like i would imagine every major city in the united states was <laughs> at that time and so i didn't get a good impression the first time i was in san diego uh also i happened to watch my own sort of i'm not going to call it a george floyd incident because it was i think the police officer was Uh, warranted in his actions but i was going for a nice little walk in the gas lamp area and you can look this up uh in the news i saw it in the la times when i got home but um i had turned a corner onto fourth street you see in that area and once i turned the corner i heard clack 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 like firecrackers were going off and i was like man people are just doing fireworks in the fucking middle of the of the uh, street in the middle of the day. That's crazy. You know, it's wild out here. No, I turn the corner, I look, and then the police are giving a CPR to a man that they just put like nine bullets center mass in. <laughs> you oh, know? shit. And I was like, what the hell is going on? Like, I was like, oh my God, C- crowds were gathering. And it was again at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of that whole thing. So people were gathering, and were they like, oh, my. No, they were gathering, and they were like, fuck you, pigs. Oh, shit. Fuck you, pigs. Like, really freaking out. And it started to become a tense sort of moment. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, like I said, I went home, and I read about it. And it turns out that man had pulled pulled a gun on the cops, and that's why they lit him up. I just thought it was interesting. I'm like, they're giving him – I know that the the police – uh, my my fr- cop who my friend who is a cop told me that they have no matter what they have to go up and try to like resuscitate resuscitate the victim. <laughs> yeah, so I was like, what if they just blast? You know, they shoot him. <laughs> they're supposed to, I guess, shoot him center mass or whatever. But what if he had like nine headshots and they're like, uh, <laughs> they're doing mouth to mouth on the headshot? I don't know. They're like, uh, uh, Jeff, uh, you're giving him CPR on his ear. <laughs> that's all that's left. I can't yet. figure out. Yeah, I can't figure <laughs> out where his mouth is, bro. No, I don't know what they're supposed to do in that case. <laughs> but, you know, the ambulance came. It turns out that guy actually did live. Uh, oh, the shit. man that, yeah, yeah, yeah. He lived and then he went to jail uh, because he yeah, pulled a, a, a weapon yeah, on the yeah. police. And he was previously wanted for robbery or something to that effect. So they were approaching him. And he mm-hmm. pulled this gun out on them or some sort of weapon. I mean, they they later determined it was a gun, but people were like, they don't even know if it's a gun. How do they even know? Like, they were losing it back then. And then I went back again to uh, uh, San Diego and had a much better time, but things were still closed, you see. So it was... I didn't get to fully experience the city, but this last weekend, holy hell, things are open. Went to bars. I went to bars after shows for the first time in over a year. Like, real proper type, like, going out after shows. Yeah, when you told me you went out to a bar, I was like, whoa. Yeah, dude. California? I know, dude, right? Like, and for people who live elsewhere, and that's many of you out there, that you're like, what? Go to a bar. I go to a bar all all the freaking time. It's like, for us... It's been rough, okay, and they're just slowly opening up out here in California. So uh, I was so stoked to go out, and I was uh, like I was freaking, I don't know, 21 again I was acting. (laughs) I'm drinking everything under the sun. I had a hangover every single day in San Diego and just kept plowing through. It was like I was going to die the next day or something. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was like I was living as if I was about to go to war or something. (laughs) My last drink. (laughs) Yeah, I'm like, this is the last night. Like, they were about to ship me off to, you know, Japan in World War II or something. I'm like, (laughs) that's the way that I was drinking because it feels like this isn't going to last forever. Yeah. Do you get that sense and stuff that you've been doing since things opened up again? Yeah, um, I'm... More of an introvert, uh, I think, 
for the most part. But uh, since Corona has ended, or before, or like all together, you're saying b- before Corona. Okay, I've, I've yeah. I've always been an introvert. I didn't want to like. I don't know I'm just cool. You know, I'm chill. Everyone's cool. Right. But like now, I'm like itching to go out, talk to random people. I'm like, yo, right. like, what's up, man? Like, where I gotta get this energy out? Like, come on, we're actually going to a bar. Uh, probably tonight called Woodland or something like Ooh, that. Ooh, do something. I do not know what that is, yeah, but you what's up, but you know. mm, it's dirty time. Hey. You're gonna get some puss out in Woodlands. Woo! What's up? No, is it like a club or is it just a regular bar? I think it's just a regular bar. Something that uh, your boy, everyone would love to hear his name, Any. Yeah, uh, he had found out about, so he's like, you know, go down there, check it out, get some uh, stress out. That's dope. That's dope. I, yeah, I, I got a lot of stress out. Chase O'Donnell came out and did shows on Saturday night, and we were like, you know, there was a group of us at this table, and then there was a group over to the next to us, and people were just singing, and they were like, people were just making out. It was crazy. And, you know, you go into a bar, and you're supposed to have your mask on. A couple of drinks in, no one's got their fucking mask on. <laughs> of course. But, you know, vaccines going out there. People are vaccinated, so they're like, who gives a shit? And, and I don't know what the fucking answer is, but... I'm glad people are having fun again, but I am also treating it as if it is going to end at some point. Like, and you said you're an introvert. I was the same way. Like, I I used to go to shows, and the shows give you an energy or a high. uh, You know, you hear the cliche all the time, but it is true. It is, there is absolutely nothing like it, the kind of high that you feel after a great show. And you can't just go back to the hotel room and Mm -hmm. lay down unless you do heroin. That is like the (laughs) only way. And you don't want people doing heroin. Mitch Hedberg, uh, you don't want another Mitch Hedberg, right? So unless you want them to start doing heroin, we got to go blow off some steam in some capacity. And um, so, you know, going out is how kind of that whole thing goes down. So, I mean, geez louise, it was just fun. fun. But, like, other than that, though, I don't... uh, I, I wasn't one to go out and do wild shit all the yeah, time, you know? Yeah, but yeah. now, fuck, I want to go to, like, someone's like, hey, I'm going to a karaoke bar. I'd be like, let's go. I'd exactly. be up there. I'd sign my name on a sheet, yep. you know? Put me on the top list. Man. Hell yeah, dude. I'm going to all, I'll go to a nightclub. I'll go to a fucking Lady Gaga concert. I don't give a <laughs> shit. Throw me in a mosh pit now. I'm <laughs> I'm back, baby. It's like, I, and I because I feel like it's going to go away again. I feel yeah. like it's going to go away yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know when that feeling is going to go away. And I don't know that it ever will, quite frankly. Uh, and I'm curious if people out there are experiencing uh, that sort of, you know, oh, my God, it's going to end. You know what I mean? I don't know if that's going to happen at any point. Um, oh, I didn't even get into this in my uh, my whole thing out in San Diego. Another thing that made me feel good about doing shows again I offended one of our troops mm. and it wasn't even in a joke about the troops he just uh, I think he just used his his troop card to like act like his being offended means more than someone else were to which I re- <laughs> to which I told him it means nothing to me <laughs> and then uh, you know at some point I just kind of like they, it didn't really cause a hullabaloo I'll tell you I, I'm not going to tell you the joke because it kind of ruins you know, I, I'm hoping to put out a fucking special here now that coronavirus is over. I was supposed to do one last year, and guess what happened? The virus. Yep. So Daddy uh, has been waiting, and I don't want to ruin anything out of it, but let's just say 9-11 is a reference somewhere in my in my set. I see, I see, I see. All right. I, uh, I you know, I, so I brought it up. And again, it has nothing to do with the troops or anything like that. This is something that he found offensive and because he had he had happened to go to Iraq to fight that war that we fought after 9-11. And I told him, I'm like, 9-11 has nothing to do with that. Or uh, the troops have nothing to do with that 9-11 joke. And he was like, I had friends die. He's like yelling at me and shit. And I I told him, I'm like, dude. Not only did 9-11 have nothing to do with, uh, or not only did the troops have nothing to do with that joke, the war he fought in had nothing to do with 9-11. <laughs> and, that, <laughs> yeah, right. and that got a laugh, but he <laughs> wasn't excited about that one. I, maybe I, I pushed that one a little too far. I don't fucking know. But I, uh, that's when he eventually walked out. Um, but yeah, it was, an, it was, I felt alive again. Like it was something that I had to deal with on stage for the first time in 
forever and i just felt juiced i felt like the incredible hulk all of a sudden of comedy i was just like oh i'm back <laughs> and boy did i drink a few uh beers that <laughs> night oh boy was Fuck that fun you. um mother's day just occurred too and i know again i'm dating the episode this is why i'm throwing out the idea maybe we switch to fridays maybe we put up a poll can we do a poll of sean on these uh youtubes is, or do we have enough stuff on youtube to do a poll or is that not a thing i'm allowed to do but maybe i'll just do it on my twitter or some shit yeah, if i twitter can't poll would be the be would be played. yeah those youtube ones i don't know if i'm because my youtube's so new and we have so many thank you by the way for everyone who has subscribed it does mean a great deal to me but uh you know, you have to go through so many, like, viewed hours and things like that. I'll have you know, you might get a little upset about how many ads we have on the episode today, but I'll have you know this. You're not going to have YouTube ads for quite some time. <laughs> they ain't coming. Unskippable. Yep. They aren't coming for a, a minute. So chill on, you, you know, be excited about that. Uh, but Mother's Day did just occur, and I thought something that was very funny uh, was the fact that... Um, uh, Mr. Uh, who was it? Christian Yelich. That's who it was of the Milwaukee Brewers. A gentleman who's had a tough couple of years getting injured and things like that. And you know what's always a tough time of year for Christian Yelich is Mother's Day. <laughs> it's the worst time of year for Christian Yelich. Uh, it's terrible time for him. Why? Because his mom's a fucking rocket. Yes. Yeah, and pretty, uh... everyone likes to remind Christian Yelich. What a rocket his mom is on Mother's Day. Like everyone, you know, they'll just be like, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there, especially Christian Yelich's mom. There she is up there. Can they see? They don't see the uh, thingy, right? Oh, there she is. Holy hell. That's a mom of a adult baseball player. Yeah, they could see that. They could see that now. Now the guy next to him is the dad. He looks younger than Christian Yelich. God damn. Look at the jeans on this kid. No wonder they pumped out a fucking... <laughs> I mean, Jesus, she's gorgeous. And uh, I, that's the one I prepped for you. Now, Sean, I was wondering, could we Google, can you do a quick Google mm -hmm. of hottest, ath uh, mo uh, hottest athletes' moms? We talked about Zach Wilson's mom. We can pull her up in a little bit. She's not exactly, like, Zach Wilson's mom is a smoke show. Like, if you saw her out at a uh, thing, and you, she looks like um, a classy MILF type. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And they actually brought that up on a... <laughs> Zach Wilson did a New York radio show on WFAN. He did uh, Carton's new show. I forget what the hell it's called. But uh, the first question he was asked was, how do you feel about your mom being uh, <laughs> the talk of the town? Everyone was talking about how attractive your mom is. I'm sure it's something you had to deal with your whole life. And he was like, yeah, we try to keep her out of the limelight. <laughs> Not too pleased about it is what Zach Wilson said. <laughs> so this is what's going to happen to Zach Wilson. His mom is going to get out of pocket because of her newfound fame, and it's going to distract him LeBron James style. Ooh. I think his mom's going to end up fucking like Ooh. Jameson Crowder or somebody on the Jets. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, sorry, Jameson Crowder. I don't want to throw you in. I don't even know if he's on the Jets still. But someone on the Jets is going to fuck Zach Wilson's mom, and that's the end of it. What do we got here? Give me some names. Give me some examples. Was there like an article with a list when you lurked before you went to the image section? Who's that? Ooh, What's that this? say? Oh, wait. This is... Does it say underneath there? Uh, Gabby Reese? Gabby Reese. I don't know who... I don't know who that is. Either. Whose mom that would be. All right. Let's... Uh, is it... Oh, here we go. We got a list right here at the top. All right. Oh, yeah. Athlete's mom. Uh, Alexis Davis. Carrie Walsh. Tell me who they're. Is. Tell me who they are. Moms of, if it says. Let's see. Well, let's I cannot see. read that at all. There you go. Give us a good article here. Who's that? Noel Picus Pace. She's a. Uh... Oh wait, is this the mom or just she is a mom? <laughs> yeah, she just is a mom. Oh, these are just moms who are athletes. These yeah, are the hottest yeah. athletes who are moms. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. that's. We don't give a we fuck about that. Yeah. We want to know the ones. I want to know like NBA moms. Here we go. NFL boom, NBA moms. moms. Oh, this is NBA. YouTube. We get we can look at a couple NBA moms. Let's see what's up. All right, all right. All right, this ad though. <laughs> oh, oh, is this a YouTube? I don't want us to get fucked on this yeah. one. So let's turn it off. I'm gonna come. You know what I'm gonna do for the next episode of Sean? I'm gonna come in with a list for us. Even though Mother's Day has passed, 
I don't care. I'm going to do some research. And if you'd like to out there, the new email, joshpottershow at gmail.com, is where you can go and you can send me who you think. Let's do a nominee. Let's do like a beauty pageant. We can crown the hottest uh, mom of an athlete. What do you say? I'm fucking down with that. How about how about we narrow it down to uh, just like, let's say NFL. Let me say it. Let's say NFL. Well, I want to keep it. Let's keep it to the four majors. How about that? Baseball, because Christian Yelich is mom. That would be a travesty to not have her on that list. On that list. So let's do MLB, NBA, NHL, and NFL. Send in, you know, make sure you tell us who they are. Plead your case. I'll pick. I'll go through it. I'll find us a top 10. All right. We'll do that on the next episode. Let's do it. All right. A post Mother's Day mom appreciation episode. <laughs> Very post Mother's Day for the record, since this entire thing is post Mother's Day uh, at the end of the day. But I believe this is the one. Yes. Okay, Josh. See, I just uh, I don't trust my own eyes and I just had to dip down and look. Today's Josh Potter show is brought to us by the fine, fine folk at Raycon. These guys make earbuds for all sorts of different things. They sent me their everyday earbuds, though, the ones that I can use that pair with my phone when I'm going out and about. I take a lot of public transportation because I don't drive, you see. So I'm always on the bus, on the subway, whatever the case may be. And I got my Raycons on. And uh, the one thing that I always worried about with wireless headphones and Bluetooth uh, type headphones was was the battery life dying because I'm on these commutes that could take hours and I don't want to be on the bus and have to listen to someone go hey you ever hear about the day you got it no I don't want that at all and thankfully because of Raycon I don't have to because it cancels all that out and by the way they got a 24 hour battery life which is banana land uh, they look great they feel even better sometimes I get scared that I've lost them because they feel so good you know what I mean I'm like oh boy I think I dropped one but no it's it just feels so comfortable in my ear that I don't even notice sometimes other than the sound that they're there you know I'm just hearing music and I go oh but I, I it's just a phantom worry you understand but they look so fantastic as well sometimes people don't even know I have earbuds in my ear and they're talking to me and I just go Raycons bro and they go oh okay and they walk away uh, but right now you can get involved and get your own pair of Raycons and listen up. If you're listening right now, maybe you can't hear me because you're on some dumb headphones, but I'm going to yell it for all the dumb headphone people out there. With Raycon, I can whisper it and you'll hear it perfectly. But uh, Raycon's offering 15% off all of their products to my listeners. Uh, and here's what you got to do to get it. You just got to go to buyraycon.com slash potter. And there you'll get 15% off your entire Raycon order. And it's such a good deal. You'll want to grab a pair and a pair to spare. So, I mean, go over there, check out the array of different uh, sorts of headphones that they have for you. That's 15% off at buyraycon.com slash potter, buyraycon.com slash potter. But let's get into the sports since we were discussing sports people. Mm, what a banger right there. And, uh, it says it here at the bottom. I can't uh, recall my brain. I did just send you that. I should look it up. <laughs> uh, hold on one moment. You know, we're getting all the kinks worked out here, you know? I also can't read my own freaking... Uh... Audio Max in Japan? Is that what you're talking about? Oh, there you go. See, you, you found the email, huh? Yeah. Perfect. Look at that. That was Audio Max a fan from Japan. That's why I especially wanted to give a shout out. Nihongo ga. What's that mean? Uh, Japanese. For what? Uh, Nihongo ga wo karimasu ka. I think it means uh, do you speak Japanese or I am Japanese, something like that. Listen to this guy. Yo, a little, 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 little bit, a little bit. A little Where'd bit. you learn that shit from? Uh, I had a, had a couple of Japanese homies. He fucked some Japanese girls, dude. Yeah. Is that what it's all about? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Call Dude, it out. Call it out. <laughs> that's what's up, though. That's what's up. They taught you Japanese shit. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's my dream. I mean, that's not my dream. I mean, but that would be fun. That would be so fun, dude. That is what's up. You smashed somebody? You in a... uh, I have, but none that have ever taught me any words. Ah, see, see, see. You know? I don't think they knew the words, to be quite honest with you, either. I don't think they spoke... <laughs> the uh 
the native tongue, if you will. But that, that I mean, holy shit, you sounded like... Sounds like you can go over there and do some shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I uh, I wanted to talk about the Kentucky Derby also just occurred here. And I thought this, you know, everyone's been talking about uh, the gentleman who is giving every excuse under the sun. If you don't already know, uh, Churchill Downs has suspended Bob Baffert, who is a uh, a trainer who is, is world renowned in the horse racing community. And, uh, you know, I'm kind of on board. I don't even give who gives a shit if if uh, a horse does performance enhancing <laughs> drugs. I love what Bob Baffert has said, though. You know, he said they're trying to cancel the horse. He said this is cancel culture run amok. Like people are trying to go out of their way to uh, end the horse's career. What I think is just wild at the end of the day. Oh, I want to find out what the other uh, excuse is because there was another thing. Uh, that he said he blamed something about cough medicine in the hay and uh, cough that cough medicine yes 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 I don't know if it's in this article but it's a thing because you know this thing is ever moving and changing yeah, yeah, yeah. he blamed a thing where like somebody had spilled cough medicine I believe in the hay and then the horse ate the hay ah uh. How that would affect its running, I don't know. Cough medicine would make me run a lot slower yeah. believe me done it a lot uh, but you know I think it's interesting that a horse could oh, fail a drug test. Painkiller. I think that's... that's oh, because I'm it has, like, codeine in the yeah, cough yeah, medicine? Yeah, so yeah I get what just, you're saying. Yeah, you could just fuck, fuck all this pain. I'm still running. That's interesting. That's a good point. But the thing that makes me uh, laugh the most, I'm wondering when he's going to put out the excuse, you know, where they should, you know, like the trainer will put out the statement. Since they suspended the trainer, after all, I don't know that they suspend a horse. I don't know how that works. I didn't hear anything about Med- Medina Spirits uh, or Medina. Is it Medina or Medina? I don't know. There's a place out in, in Buffalo, a very small town, very near to Buffalo called Medina. But I do know Medina is like a band or what have you. But um, whatever the dumb horse's name uh, that's probably going to become glue or whatever now that it failed a hor- uh, drug test. You know what they do? To, you know how they treat athletes who fail drug tests? They they want them de- they want them gone. <laughs> You gonna do this to the horse? I just think the the Bob Baffert should have put out a statement where it was like, we know that Medina Spirits uh, got a problem, and uh, we're hoping that they can get the help that they deserve and that they need in order to move on. Like, what if they treated the the horse like a drug addict, the way they treat like Josh Gordon when he gets caught with a weed test? They could, yeah, they could for sure. We have reached out to Medina Spirits family, and we are going to do everything we can to facilitate the proper care. And uh, <laughs> the proper treatment that they need going forward. I think that could have helped Bob Baffert with his suspension, you know, yeah. if he did all of the right things. Like, they have to act, it, they have to plead ignorant. We didn't know what the Medina Spirit was doing in their private time, you know, once they, <laughs> once they leave the stable. I mean, that's, they're left to their own devices, and we didn't... Un- we didn't see a problem, so uh, <laughs> could you just imagine a, a fucking junky horse? They're like, God, they're yelling at it in the stable. But Dana Spirit, come on, get your shit together. You got such talent, and you're going to throw it all away for this junk. <laughs> I'm waiting for the spirit, you know, yeah. or the uh, the movie, the film. I'm waiting for the film on Medina Spirit where they're just yelling at him. He's like in the fucking Who's stable. Play the horse? Who will play the ho- Tom Hanks? Hey. Obviously. I can't shake it. I can't shake this. <laughs> it's got a grip on me. It's all this like Johnny Cash struggle type shit. Oh, just the idea of a horse failing a drug test. They should have passed it off on the horse though, like it had a problem. That would have been the best way to go about it. Elsewhere in the sports world, Rob Gronkowski. This is a very nice story. This is a good boy story. Uh, Rob Gronkowski donated uh, to rehabilitate a Boston playground so future generations uh, can call another little kid a pussy, just like he did back on the playground. (laughs) It's very nice, isn't that? That's very nice. I thought it was very touching. It's actually a very nice, for real, nice thing that he's done. Rob Gronkowski and I are from the same town in Buffalo. Did you know that? No. I used to... I used to go to a school called Williamsville South High School. He went to one called Williamsville North High School. And so his football team used to demolish our football team. But I used to do the uh, play-by, not the play-by-play, but the uh, public announcer 
thing. Mm. So I'd always, I, I'd say his name every time. It'd be like Gronkowski, and he had two other brothers mm. that played or whatever. Or he has multiple brothers, but they, uh, you know, there was a couple of them playing around the same time. So it'd be like Gronkowski with the pass to Gronkowski. <laughs> Everything was Gronk, and then on defense, it'd be like tackle by Gronkowski, <laughs> all the freaking time. But he is like a party dude, and he was such a bro that I thought it was funny that he was rehabilitating a playground, you know, the place where so many kids get bullied by guys like Rob Gronkowski. <laughs> <laughs> and I just thought of him doing an infomercial for it or something or, like, trying to get donations. He's like, it sucks that a kid can't grow up and call another kid a pussy the way that I used to, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so now they'll have that opportunity. 1.2 million yeah, through his... Yeah, just gl- looking at that. Yeah, 1.2 million through his Gronk... Nation Youth Foundation towards uh, a Charles Bank playground in Boston. The Patriots taught me the importance of giving back from the first day I stepped in that organization. A huge shout out to Mr. Kraft and the Patriots for instilling that into me and showing me the importance of what it's like to give back. Uh, Gronkowski spent nine seasons, of course, with the Patriots. He then went on to retire, so he didn't get traded to the Detroit Lions. <laughs> and then he re, uh, re-came into the league and signed with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Reuniting him is what I meant to say with Tom Brady. And uh, so they won a Super Bowl, if you don't know the uh, the old history. Now, this is an interesting thing that was unfolding last week. I suggested that the New York Mets need a little team chemistry building. Just a little bit of, uh, you know. You know, just like, hey, you know, you want to swap wives. You want, hey, you want to run a train on this girl. Kind of thing like, you know, obviously willing parties. The women, obviously, who wouldn't want, you know. Michael Conforto and J.D. Davis and Dominic Smith all running a train. Who wouldn't want that? (laughs) (laughs) Who wouldn't? I'm sure. Okay, there are probably ones that wouldn't, but I'm going to venture to guess there are ones that would. So (laughs) find those. That's all. But, you know, I think they need it now more than ever. But I also think this this last incident might have helped them as well. And we have more and more coming out about it. There was, while I was in San Diego, there was a wild event that occurred where all of a sudden you saw the camera show uh, Michael Conforto and Smith run down to the dugout, just sprint down the dugout. And then other players kind of casually followed them, you see. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, you know, the, the announcers were like, got a little hullabaloo down in the uh, tunnel of the dugout there. And, and, you know, as they ran in and everything. And no one kind of knew what was going on. And there was an incident where I believe where Francisco Lindor and Jeff McNeil had fucked up a ground ball that went toward their way. Like, so they, they didn't like communicate properly or something to that effect. And then there was uh, that incident in the tunnel shortly thereafter. Everyone knows, of course, Francisco Lindor up till this past weekend, 0 for 26 was having a rough time very expensive player you know an expensive uh acquisition from over the offseason and so he's been kind of a disappointment for Mets fans but he did get off his schneid a little bit and and he hit a home run right before they had this tunnel argument supposedly him and Jeff McNeil that's who was down in the end of the dugout when Michael Conforto and all of them ran in we learned to find out and everyone's like oh my god that was Jeff McNeil and Francisco Lindor yelling at each other in the tunnel that's crazy. What's going on? No one could really see. No one could hear. So they asked Francisco Lindor, what happened yeah. in that tunnel? Here he is to tell us. I told him, I was like, hey, I'd never seen a New York rat. So we were down sprinting. I want to go see a New York rat. And he got mad at me. He's like, no, it's not a rat. It's a raccoon. I'm like, hell no, man. It's a damn rat. It's a New York rat, man. I was just crazy because... If we were going back and forth debating if it was a rat or a raccoon. <laughs> Crazy, man. Insane. <laughs> Who was he? Who were you debating that with? Uh, with Jeff. With Jeff. I was like, bro, you got you to gotta check this out. I was like, this is a New York rat. He's like, no, man, I've been here longer than you. <laughs> I don't know. What do you think there, Sean? Um, I think he's, uh, oh, he's, on, he's on something. <laughs> I'm going to tell you this. I think he was being... A hundred percent real. Yeah. Everyone's got their narrative. Oh, what a freaking dumb excuse. That's that's such a dumb bullshit excuse. Bah, bah, bah. I think Francisco Lindor, look at how happy he is, first of all. Look at the smile on his face. He is not that good of an actor. <laughs> I mean, he delivered that thing without flinching. 
they didn't discuss that prior, I don't think. You know, they're not like, okay, Francisco. No one, no PR guy sat him down and was like, all right, Francisco, now when you go out there, they're going to ask you what happened with Jeff in the tunnel. You got to, we got to come up with something. Here's what our team put together. Um, you, being new to New York, you've never seen a rat. Jeff's been here a while. He's seen a lot of rats. You pretend you saw one. That's why everyone <laughs> ran in the tunnel. You pretend you saw it. You and Jeff, that's a rat. That's a raccoon. It's kind of like uh, the Bugs Bunny Daffy Duck, you know? Yeah, yeah, where yeah. Where they're putting up the signs. But, I again, everyone's under the impression that this is horse shit and that there is some sort of bubbling... Uh, thing behind him. He, I mean, I don't necessarily think it's horseshit. I just think there's a little bit more to it that he just he can't he can't say. I feel like I feel like Jeff McNeil didn't come out and say anything, and I feel like Jeff McNeil's kind of guy that would be like, uh, like if he had to deliver this message. Now Francisco Lindor is like Mister Smile. I mean, his smile is like beaming. He's always he's like kind of known for these. Like one of the one of the faces of the league, I would say, even. You know, I'd venture to go that far to say he's one of the stars of the league because of his smile. Now, if you put Jeff McNeil out there to answer that question and they and the PR team fed him that same narrative, Jeff McNeil would be like, yeah, no, uh, Francisco said there was a rat, and I said, that's not a fucking rat. Like, he gets, like, even more pissed. <laughs> yeah. And then he sits out there, and he's like, maybe if you made that fucking catch, I'd say it was a rat. No, it's like... <laughs> so... I'm going to see what here what the article uh, pe- points to in a couple of ways because uh, Jeff McNeil took the field at the top of the eighth, frowning and getting a pat on the back from Alonzo. So I don't know that he would be that. Th- these are just things people are, you know, looking at this stuff like the Sapruder film and looking at all the details and things like that and going like, oh, what's what's that facial expression all about? What's that all about? And... Um, Oh, it says here, McNeil, at, at, the, at the end, McNeil stuck to Lindor's story about the rat-raccoon debate, adding that he actually thought it was a possum and deflected when told there was skepticism about that story. They can believe whatever they want, McNeil said. We're a tight-knit group. Everybody loves everybody. Well, that kind of makes me, that pokes holes in my story a little bit. <laughs> you didn't have to go above and beyond about that one. And I can imagine Jeff McNeil saying it in a way where he wasn't necessarily smiling. That's all. So this is the time more than ever, Mets. Get your wives. Get your girlfriends. Get a bucket of keys. And start dipping your hands in it's gonna build team chemistry <laughs> you're gonna come back i promise you mets i love you i want you to get into it i've been watching way too many mets games this season i'm telling you i'm not people ask me you know josh what uh what what team are you a fan of people always love asking me i wear different hats i i uh you know i do all kinds of different i you know i play as different teams when i play on twitch on mlb the show i'm going to different games i'm talking about different teams i don't have this is the old person in me i don't have a favorite team you i'm just players. i'm rooting for baseball dude and i like players yes so yeah. i'll i'll watch my favorite players and uh i like stories so it's like there's no hatred towards a team necessarily and there's no extraordinarily extraordinary love for a team either we're all looking at screens we're all staring at our computers at our ipads especially our phones we're looking at televisions and all this blue light and all this digital eye strain is affecting us and i mean hey as a guy who's pretty freaking blind i've got to get all the protection that i can and thanks to the fine folks over at blue blocks boy oh boy have I uh, experienced a whole new world? I used to get headaches. I used to get blurred, blurred vision even more. I mean, I'd get, he- I'd get, uh, you know, dry, watery eyes because of all the eye strain that I was getting from the digital things that I was staring at. And Blue Blocks and their technology has come through in the clutch, and they're protecting what I have left of my eyes. And perhaps you're thinking, you know, Josh, my prescription is pretty poor. I can't get a Blue Blocker thing. Other companies have told me I. They did it for me. If they can do it for me, they can do it for you. I, uh, I, I mean, geez, at least look into it. I doubt your eyes are as bad as mine. Uh, the founders were unhappy with the quality and lack of science behind leading blue light blocking glasses brands, and that's why they have uh, come up with this technology that has, you know, high quality lenses. Look at how I mean, these are amazing and they're stylish. They've got a th- 
bunch of different styles that you can choose from. Uh, and uh, I got, I forget the, the names. I wish I had that. I, I feel like an idiot not looking up the name of the ones that I've rocked, but you can definitely see them on the site. And there were like four others that I wish I could get as well that I'm going to probably buy down the road here. Uh, but I wear them all the time. You see me in pictures, you see me on Instagram wearing them and you can get uh, your own and get your energy back, sleep better and block out the unhealthy effects of blue light with blue blocks by getting 15% off by going to blueblocks.com slash Josh, or you can enter code Josh at checkout. That's B-L-U-B-L-O-X.com slash Josh for 15% off. Just use the code Josh. Well, folks, I don't know anything about lawns. In fact, I've never even had a lawn. Uh, but I can tell you if I did have a lawn, the first people that I would call are the fine folk over at Sunday. And uh, they hit me up about sponsoring this show, which I'm very thankful for. And I told him I don't have a lawn, but my buddy Al is obsessed with his lawn. So they said, we'll send Al some stuff. They did, and Al won't shut up about it. I mean, I think he even ruined Mother's Day because he was spending so much time uh, admiring his own results that he got from Sunday. That's what I heard at the, at the very least. You see, what what's so cool about it is you go onto their website and you give them your address and they kind of map out your lawn and they also take into account what part of the world you live in, the climate, uh, whatever the, you know, the soil differences and things like that that you have that perhaps other parts of the world don't have. And they assess all of these things and then they get you the product that will properly uh, help you grow a better, more lush, uh, perfect looking lawn like so many want. And they've got natural uh, sort of things in it, things you can pronounce, I should say, uh, things like uh, seaweed, iron, molasses, you know, things that you can grow your lawn better with and also feel better about using as a matter of fact. Uh, and I mean, they explain everything that, that you get and why you're going to get it. And they explain how to use it, which is so easy. You just like put this they send you these pouches and it just screws right onto your hose a couple minutes babbity boop and you're all set in fact al said to me the only thing that he doesn't like about it is the fact that it took him so little time and he had to go deal with his family again afterwards he didn't get his lawn escape i guess like he usually does because it was so quick and so easy uh but you can let sunday take the guesswork out of growing your grass greener if you're having difficulties with your lawn you see uh you can have a more beautiful lawn this spring as spring is sprung my friend get on it uh get sunday.com slash josh is going to get you twenty dollars off your custom lawn plan at checkout that's twenty dollars off your custom lawn plan at get sunday.com slash josh but with that said let us get into the news shall we friend <laughs> Bars. That was uh, Odd Track Numbers, yes? Yeah. That did that bad boy right there. He always bringing in the bangers. And keep your instrumentals and remixes and all those things coming. Again, the new email, Show at gmail. Dot com. Quick note on that. Uh, I've been going through in my thing all your resumes and reading all those things. Thank you so much. It's going to be a few months from now that we're going to start getting things going in that department. So, uh, I, I just if I haven't written back or anything like that, don't think that's... A sign of anything it's just it's good to have we're compiling and we've got a few we just got to get relaxed we got a few months down the road i'm going to miss a sean when he eventually has to go but uh we are going to you know get to all that so i promise you don't fret about that but again the new email josh potter show at gmail.com don't send it to the old email. It doesn't work anymore. So send it to the new email. And that goes for your Roach reporting as well. And we've got a few Roach reporters uh, in our mix today, as a matter of fact. Uh, this one, though, is something that I came across that I thought was interesting. The headline reads, TripAdvisor removes insensitive review of an Auschwitz museum after first saying it complied with the submission guidelines. 
I think that's pretty odd that they even allow you to review an Auschwitz museum. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I don't know why there's comments allowed. Yeah, why do we need a comment <laughs> section on the Auschwitz museum necessarily? Or at least, like, we need people's opinion on it. Like, you know, I don't know. Uh, what are you writing on there? What, criti- yeah. what criticism? What, I mean, okay, let's go into the or criticism. Or, yeah, like, I don't know what you would have to say that'd be like, Good. Negative, yes, yeah, or good. good. I mean, yeah. like they should all be glowing. Yeah, is the point. It should yeah. be five stars every time. Mm-hmm. And I don't even know that stars are appropriate as a rating system <laughs> for something like that. I don't know that we should be starring anything when it comes to the Auschwitz Museum. Nevertheless, this is what was uh, removed, but subsequently removed because originally it was posted on there. Uh, it says the travel website TripAdvisor is removed an insensitive review of the Auschwitz Museum. It initially complied with its guidelines, as we mentioned. The museum at the site of the Nazi concentration camp in Poland on Thursday tweeted that it had asked the Massachusetts-based travel website to take down a review in which the writer said they went to Auschwitz to test the chamber and <clears throat> called the site fun for the family. Now, see, that one, the, if they didn't do the chamber thing, if they just said fun for the family... Even that's kind of like, well, that's a little mm-hmm. fucked up. But at the same time, that's just some dummy being like trying to say something good. You know, this guy, obviously not in this case, but say it was just some ignorant dumb dumb who, you know, some mom. Trip. Yeah. Some mom was like, we had a great time. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. well, you're not really supposed to. They don't fucking know the difference. You know, they think there's a gift shop and some other shit. I don't know. Is there a gift shop there? There shouldn't be. Yeah. Do you go to a gift shop? Do you get a gift shop from a fucking... There better not be a fucking gift shop. If there is, then they can't get mad about anything. They got reviews, so I don't know. More than one million people, most of them Jews, were killed at the Auschwitz. We all know that. According to the company, it complies with their submission guidelines. So the, this is TripAdvisor being like, well, we don't necessarily... We got to protect free speech here. We can't necessarily uh, take it down. Uh, TripAdvisor later reversed course, removing it after they could read it, probably. You know, I mean, what the fuck? Why would... <laughs> they, we have to do a review process here. We don't know the, the their intent. Test the chamber. Is that something that they can do at the Auschwitz camp, uh, Museum? No? Oh, okay. Well, then we're going to take it down. They actually do have a uh, gift shop. Have you wondering. Have you been there? No, I haven't been there, oh. but I did hear about it. And uh, it's it's not like anything super crazy, but I believe it was like a bookstore, like mostly books. Oh, books and shit. Yeah, that yeah, makes yeah, sense. Yeah. It's not like Christmas ornaments nah, nah, and nah, shit. Nah, like, well, yeah. why would they have Christmas <laughs> ornaments? That'd yeah, be yeah. wild. They're like Christmas ornaments. I said Christmas. Of all things, Josh, you had to pull Christmas <laughs> ornaments for the... You're a fucking idiot, Josh. <laughs> I'm dumb. That deserves an <laughs> that deserves an idiot. But I have, I'm slow on the uh, uh, switch over. I got I gotta just train my body to sw- to hit the switch over after I play the music. That's what I've got to do. So that way I can get get on this quicker. Idiot. <laughs> you know. Idiot. Now I'm less dumb. But uh, let's see what else here it says. Uh, in this case, our initial screening failed to identify this review as promoting intolerance. Well, that's because your screening process probably was looking for certain words. <laughs> yeah. Though our, uh, <laughs> through our escalation process, this review was removed. We always aim to get it right the first time. And we apologize to the Auschwitz Memorial and Museum and the Jewish. Blah, blah, blah. So, like, here's my thing, though. What is an appropriate negative comment to leave on a review there? Like, I wish I could, like, if I were to go through it and I saw, like, the, like a woman going, like, the bathrooms weren't clean at the Auschwitz Museum. Shut up, lady. It's like, you know where the bathrooms weren't clean? Auschwitz. Yeah. You know, the bathrooms were a little fucked up in Auschwitz, <laughs> if you recall, lady. So deal with, you know... The lack of toilet paper, that one instance you were visiting. What could they possibly complain about? If you're complaining about the Auschwitz Museum in any capacity, I think that you're fucking, I don't know, take your Yelp away. That should be like the way, you know how they ban people from Twitter? Mm -hmm. That should be the way they ban people from Yelp. It's like, (laughs) this person left a one star on the Auschwitz Museum. Your account is banned. Your account, get out of here. Yeah, you don't deserve to have an opinion on the quality of anything. Something else that's very cool that's going on. My hometown, Buffalo, New York. Hey, shout out. Shout out. What's up? 716. They're solving COVID. They're solving it. They figured it out. You know, they want to get people to do vaccines. Everyone wants to get people to do vaccines. And, you know, they had um, in the beginning, I remember all the presidents, Obama, Bush, 
Clinton, not Trump. They didn't invite him, apparently. But uh, the other ones, the other living ones, all got their COVID vaccines right out of the gate. And then you saw something where it was like local reporters were going out and getting their COVID vaccines, showing the public, see, I'm getting mine. But if a local reporter was getting their COVID vaccine, that was just so they could jump you in the line. (laughs) No one, I didn't need to see like the weatherman on my local station get the COVID vaccine for me to go like, oh, I'll do it now too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, that's not a guy influencing my medical choices at the end of the day is like the dipshit weather guy on my local TV station. It's just that, and then they're acting brave about it. They're like, I'm taking uh, my risk. You know, it's like, no, you're not. You're just jumping the line, you fucking twat. <laughs> but my hometown doing something very interesting, and it's my buddy uh, Mark, Mark Polencar. Shout out Mark Polencars. I'm sure he publicly wouldn't want anyone to know that we are friends uh, because he's in <laughs> politics and I'm this, and I talk up like this, and I do this show. <laughs> so don't uh, hit him up and say we're friends because I'm sure he wants to deny that at every... Uh, you know, chance that he gets. But county executive of Erie County, where I grew up, that's what his particular job is. And uh, he developed a program called a shot in a chaser. And uh, it is to encourage people to get vaccines. Uh, And uh, so let's see what it says here. Uh, The idea of getting uh, vaccinated had been rolling around in the back of Tyler Morse. That's who they interviewed about this uh, subject, a gentleman named Tyler Morse. Uh, It's been, you know, kind of he was bouncing it in his head. He wasn't convinced. Do I get the vaccine? Do I not get the vaccine? As a 28 year old, he didn't feel any particular danger, but he finally decided he should start looking for a COVID-19 vaccination clinic this week. Then he heard the magic words, Mm. free beer. Ah, Yes, Saturday was the first day that Erie County worked with local microbreweries to host its Shot and a Chaser program, offering individuals who got their first dose of the COVID-19 vaccination at Resurgence Brewing Company a free pint glass and a coupon uh, for the vaccinated person's drink of choice. Under normal circumstances, it would be beyond strange for a brewery to host a vaccination clinic in the shadow of a 1,000-gallon fermentation tanks. Yes, uh, Resurgence Brewing, very cool place if you're in Buffalo. Go check it out. Um, But nevertheless... These are not normal times. Given the world we live in now, it's not so weird uh, to have a vaccination at a brewing company. County Executive Mark Polencars, who we mentioned, who was uh, nursing his own drink in one hand while directing vaccine receipt <laughs> recipients uh, to open tables with the other, was happy to see the county's first shot and chaser effort going so well. Before the vaccination started at 11 a.m., there was a line out the door. So that's something that we can do in other communities bribe them with beer beer is always mark poland cars answer to everything and i love that about him like when there's a blizzard in town of sean uh you know we're about to get like eight nine feet of snow he just tells people he's like go get a six pack he says six pack to be chill like because he's a politician but he really means like get a 30 rack (laughs) and but he started this is what he started doing he started ranking snowstorms by how much beer you should buy he's like this is a six pack storm you know, uh-huh. not that great. This is a beer ball storm, he would call it. You know, beer ball. <laughs> a beer ball is one of the. It's an old school thing. They oh, don't. Okay. I don't know that they make them anymore. They used to sell these balls of beer. Like they would be that huge. Sounds dope. It was pretty sweet. <laughs> I don't remember why they stopped. Maybe people were throwing the balls through people's car windshields after they were done with them. I'm not sure. But that's how these other communities yeah, get the vaccine going. I don't care if you like it or you don't like it. Just, oh, that's cool. I, I just want to fucking... Up. Oh, look at that. You looked it up there, huh? Dude, that's sick. Hell yeah. Uh, next up, a little bit of a sad story post-Mother's Day on this one. A woman who didn't know she was pregnant delivered a preterm baby mid-flight. Impressive. A NICU nurse happened to be on board. NICU, I was in a, a NICU for quite some time. I was born four months premature, if you don't know already. Dale Glenn was dozing off on a Delta flight from Salt Lake City to Honolulu last week when his 19-year-old daughter abruptly elbowed him. Dad, they're calling for a doctor. Oh, I thought it was going to be the 19-year-old was pregnant. Could you imagine just being a dad with your 19-year-old daughter and just being like, you know, she's eight months pregnant and you're like, oh yeah, she's cool. Like she doesn't know and you don't know. Like how could you not tell? I don't know. About halfway through the six-hour flight, uh, Glenn sprung to his seat. I'm a physician. What can I do? What a tryhard, right? (laughs) 
if I was a, this is how shitty, <laughs> I, I don't know if this is even allowed as a doctor, but this is how shitty of a person I am. If I were a doctor and I was on a flight and I was sleeping or something, and someone elbowed me, I'd just pretend I wasn't a doctor. Like, you know how people are always like, what do you do? And I go, you know, I never say comedian. I'm always like, I'm in sales or something. I just make like something up. I sell computer chips. <laughs> yeah. And then they're like, what's, what do you sell? I just make something that they would something so boring i just try to come up with the most so they stop asking questions this guy's on the plane he's a doctor his his daughter like elbows him like dad they're asking for a doctor he'd be like who so what there's probably another one shh don't say anything shh, shh, shh. Keep your eyes it's probably nothing <laughs> they're probably just being a that, someone probably just being a bitch don't worry shh. just keep yeah and then goes back to sleep <laughs> and then it would be like no it's serious then i'd be like all right i'm a doctor whatever so anyway, he this guy though, fucking Hardo, he's like, I'm a doctor. And I think that's what you gotta do to be a doctor. And you know, you gotta have that kind of attitude probably, and that's why you're better people than I. Uh, that you have that sort of gung ho mentality <laughs> when it comes to things like that. While a mid flight delivery would be an alarming uh, in any case, uh, it was especially so in this case. The mother was unaware that she was twenty nine weeks pregnant when she boarded the plane. She just thought she put on some corona weight. I mean, what the fuck? I had no idea. Uh, Lavi is her name. Uh, she's 38 years old. Said in a recorded video, uh, she was headed to Honolulu for a family vacation. I don't even think you can fly that pregnant, can you? Probably because this it induces labor. I don't, maybe. I don't know. Uh, she started experiencing severe stomach cramps during the flight. It turned out she was actually in labor and delivered a three-pound... Uh, this is a three-pound baby, not a six Damn. to twelve-pound baby. Glenn said. Oh, so it yeah, was isn't that three pounds, pretty light. Yeah, I was born pretty... two pounds, so oh, you're two. Oh, this sh- baby's kind of a yeah. bitch compared to me. <laughs> just saying. I was two pounds, so what's up, baby? Oh, three pounds. Still mm. holding the world record. <laughs> <laughs> Boo hoo! And you're three pounds. I was two. What's up? Hey, they were born in a plane, though. All right, dude. Fine. I shit. Just, I, didn't, I mean, I didn't want to take. Sorry, my mom knew she was pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, but it's just wild. She was going on a family trip. I don't know if she was heading there alone and meeting her family. But then imagine when she showed up and they're like, "Uh, Lavi, uh, you want to tell us anything?" And she's like, "Corona's been nuts." <laughs> I gained so much weight in just this one area. It's so weird. My tits are lactating. I don't understand it. I guess that's late to not know. That's really late. I wish I, I think. could. I mean, this I is something know. I would uh, need to talk to Dr. Drew about in some capacity because he, you know, he used to do the, like, I'm 16 and pregnant kind of thing. I don't know that he ever was involved with the one where, like, the, the MTV show where they were like, I don't know I'm pregnant. Remember that show? Mm-hmm. I never watched it, though, and I don't know how late along they didn't know they were pregnant, but... This one seems very late because in that show, the one that I did see, it was like the girl was like, I just thought I ate a weird hamburger. You know what I mean? She didn't know (laughs) what was going on. But eight months. Imagine not having your period for that long. And like, I mean, I can't imagine. I've never had a period, so I guess I can't imagine it. But I probably just like, fuck. Yeah. Like, I I know that's what I mean. (laughs) She's just like, shit, this is dope. (laughs) <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. Couldn't be anything wrong with me. I have no I have to ask a woman what, what that's like to just like all of a sudden, maybe it's a feeling where you're like, I hope this never ends. Uh, while in the bathroom, she had the presence of mind to catch the baby and call for help. So she just like, I mean, that's got to be a surreal experience to be like, I didn't know I was pregnant. And then all of a sudden you're like, I'm, sh- am I shitting right now? What is this? And then all of a sudden a baby... I don't fuck. It's so wild. My brain would go crazy. Think, I didn't even think about that's how it probably happened. She's just like, just a like quick. Yeah, she just did it. Hunted it out real quick. And then thankfully the the NICU uh, person was was there to help. You know, with the baby. Uh, you know, it being premature, it doesn't breathe as well and everything like that. They have to give it oxygen and things like that, and it's blood pressure and all that kind of stuff. So. Uh, according to this, I made all those baby jokes. Please tell me the baby's alive. Um, is it? Uh, there were some pictures at the end. Oh, yes, the yeah. baby's alive. Okay, so there we yeah, go. Yeah. So it's still a bitch for being three pounds. I was two. I was born four months premature, about, you know, three and some change, but I round up because that's my privilege. All right. Are you going to come at me? Come at me. Next up, we have an interesting, uh, this one coming from a Roach reporter out there. I Tox, or is it Tokes? I do not know. I assume Tox because of the fact that weed's so cool. 
Uh, but, <laughs> but this uh, headline reads, according to police, theater managers sold Coke and popcorn. Ooh. What theater is this? Daddy wants to go. <laughs> I wish I knew about this theater before they shut it down. The manager of a Minnesota movie theater sold cocaine hidden in a bag of popcorn to a police informant. Well, that's not who you want to sell it to. Jamie Lynn Hineker, 39, was named yesterday in criminal complaint charging her with narcotic sales. Hineker is the general manager of the four screen spotlight theaters in Mankato, a city 80 miles from Minneapolis. If convicted of the felony drug count, Hineker faces a maximum of 20 years in prison and a fine of up to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars that's pretty wild man who that, sold her out you said it was a cop right i uh, no, he didn't no one sold her out she sold drugs to a undercover informant so it must have been they catching wind of this let's ah. see they must have caught wind of all this whole thing and then they went to go check it out they're like can i get a popcorn with some extra salt <laughs> You think it was, you think that was yeah, the code? Yeah, yeah probably. Uh, can I? Why is everyone at this movie theater ordering popcorn with sugar on it? That's weird. Mm. I order mine with salt because you know salt is something you actually have to order. So like to get it special, you go uh, no salt on mine, but some sugar. Yeah. And then they're like, doink. So maybe I don't know. Let's see what happens here. Hineker was the target of a Minnesota River Valley Drug Task Force probe, according to the probate cause affidavit. An investigator reported that he knew through previous investigations that Hineker worked in a movie theater and the sale of cocaine typically took place behind the theater in an alley or at the theater in a popcorn container with popcorn. That one sounds cooler. Mm -hmm. In a phone call with Hineker, a confidential informant last year arranged for the purchase of $100 worth of cocaine. After conducting the buy at the theater, which is in the Mankato Place Mall, the informant told cops that they entered the mall and Hineker put the cocaine in a popcorn bag. Popcorn was then placed in the bag. So you got a little extra popcorn with your Coke. <laughs> That'll be $100 for the Coke. And nineteen ninety nine for the popcorn. We're still a movie theater. It's expensive. I bet the popcorn costs more than the Coke in some capacities. That's what I was thinking too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Most def. That'll be you want it. You want just a eight ball? That'll be I don't even remember how much an eight ball costs, but the popcorn costs double. So eat eat on that. According to court records, Hineker has previously been convicted of obstruction, theft, malicious punishment of a child, yikes, DWI, and drug possession. Uh, and that is that. I can't believe it's not butter. <laughs> <laughs> I can. Whoa. Man accused of beating girlfriend to death on York Beach uh, to get psychological evaluation. This comes from a Roach reporter, Greg. Now, that might sound like a grim headline, and it is a grim story. Uh, here, but I got to tell you, this is something that's very interesting. A main judge on Tuesday ordered that a Massachusetts man accused of beating his girlfriend to death with a rock on a York beach undergo psychological evaluation to determine if he is competent to assist in his own defense. Jeffrey Buchanan is 33 and he's charged with intentional or knowing murder in the death of Rhonda Patalania. Uh, that happened at short sands beach in Florida. And, uh, this is the this is what happened with this guy, and I found this very odd. Um, the defendant made his first appearance in jail remotely or remotely from jail in the facility. Blah blah blah. Where is the part where it talks about it? Okay, so Buchanan was captured on nearby surveillance videos, hitting a woman over the head with a rock. <laughs> Heinous shit, right? Uh, according to the court affidavit, that's what happened. Several people who dialed nine one one. That's because it, it just happened, you know. Uh, like in the daytime. This is like mm -hmm. by 4 p.m. So he's just bashing a woman over the head with a rock. People are like, holy <laughs> shit. They're like, oh my God, 911. And then all of a sudden, like everyone, there's just a crowd around calling fucking 911. Uh, so several people dialed 911 shortly before 4 p.m. Friday uh, reported to see a black man wearing a black hoodie and a red sneaker striking a woman and dragging her body behind some rocks. Does that Yikes. tell about the people who called 911? Does the order of that information tell something about them even under duress do they first say a black guy's doing it with a black hoodie and a red sneakers or would a, a woke person be like there's a, a a man in a black hoodie a red sneaker striking a woman with a rock and then the cops will be like well uh, sir is the is the man caucasian is he uh black is he a latino why does that matter and then they'd be like oh i didn't even notice <laughs> yeah oh shit i didn't even notice I took no heed of that. 
well, how dare you ask me? <laughs> yeah, that's what I, exactly what I was thinking. When interviewed by police, Buchanan allegedly claimed that he had blacked out and did not remember striking her with the rock. That's his defense. Now, that's not... I'm not like, uh, I don't know the guy, you know, I don't, I'm not in the guy's brain. I'm not going to speculate one way or another. But what if that's true? That's so fucking scary. Like, imagine just having a psychological break for, I don't know, 10 minutes and that's what you do. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How fucked up is that? And then are you, uh, are you guilty of that then? Obviously you did it, so you're guilty. But imagine there's a way to pinpoint that we can determine 100% that this person blacked out during that moment in his life and that occurred like and he's just like oh what the fuck did I do you know what I mean like <laughs> could you imagine just blacking out and you wake up and you have like a rock in your hand and there's just like a woman's head smashed in front of you and you're just like oh my god like talk about framed. some yeah talk about some like worst fear shit I don't know it's fucking crazy That's and then you go like did I do it even when do you ever have because I have such a guilty conscience, like I try not to commit any sort of act where I would get in trouble. And uh, I would just like, if I, if somebody was accusing me of murder is my point, I would start to go like, did I do it? I Instead think I like, yeah, like a hundred percent. Like I would never type of. Yeah, they would, if they could grill me and I've seen these interrogations in these movies. They could grill me to the point where I would confess to a crime that I didn't do, probably. I'd be like, I think they're right. Probably did do it. I was kind of thinking about it. But this man, now they have to, you know, decide someone. And I don't know how they do that, whether it be with a medical examination or how even medically they can determine that one way or another, uh, whether or not he did in fact. But could you imagine the hell of having to live in the prison of that man's? Forget the fact that he might go 25 to life. Uh, just the prison of his own brain say he not a murderous person but has to live inside the fact that he blacked out and had just a small psychotic break that uh, resulted in using a rock to bludgeon a human being that's pretty Jesus. wild but let's talk about murdering someone who might deserve it this comes to us by way from a, a roach reporter named randy and yes we do have uh, quite a bit and because somebody asked for it i forget whom on twitter asked quite a bit of uh times if we could have some murder uh sort of things i don't have the murder so oh, i was really i was waiting i was ready for it how do i not have hold on i think i have it i i'm such a fucking bi- uh, oh murder found it <laughs> oh i knew i was gonna find it Oh, thank the fucking Lord. Now I don't have any of the other ones, though, because I went out of everything. It's in a different folder. I'm all over the place, uh, Sean. I, I'll i get a soundboard going. <laughs> we just got to get buttons up in here. Yeah, look at me. I'm fucking up everywhere. We just got to get the papers back. Yeah. Got to get the papers back. That's Well, it's not about the... It's not really the, the iPad I kind of enjoy. Um, get two iPads. Then. Get two, yeah, something. I don't fucking know. We'll figure it out, folks. We'll get it going. I want to get back on the fucking soundboard, Josh. You dumb fucking idiot. God. Idiot. John Otto would be just fucking idiot. There. Holy shit, folks. So this is a nice feel-good story uh, here at the to wrap things up. Let's see. Jorge Porto Ciara is a gentleman's man, uh, the gentleman's name. He was arrested... But he was arrested because he was planning to burn sex offenders to death. Pretty cool. Mm-hmm. I think that's a cool mm-hmm. idea. Uh, you know, taking uh, matters into his own hand. We're, we're not going to get a real life Batman. So I think we got Jorge Porto Sierra here <laughs> who wants to burn to death sex offenders. That's pretty decent. He was only thwarted when police arrived too soon. Uh, he kept saying to the to the sex offenders, I'm going to kill you, child molester. That's what he kept screaming at them as he poured gasoline on the door of Friendly Village Inn in uh, Osceola County, Florida. I have a lot of news coming out of that area in Florida, I've learned. 
Uh, with a cigarette in hand, uh, he continued to dump the flammable fluids all over the premises in hopes of setting the property ablaze and burning the sex offenders inside to death. I don't know if this... Is this in just the sex offenders in? I don't know. Um, he told the police when they arrived on scene before he could carry out his plan, he intended to barbecue all the child molesters uh, and kill them. But with police on hand to foil his plans, these fucking police, man. <laughs> Meddling police. These goddamn police shooting unarmed black men, mm. fucking getting out of pocket. You know, you want to get rid of this ACAB business. I mean, you got to start letting guys barbecue child molesters, I think, at the end of the day. Probably the property came into effect in some capacity. But he didn't get to do it, though. So. He didn't get to do it, So, but it's, it's his intent, which I think should be heralded. Yeah. Why are we arresting him and giving him gold, uh, silver cuffs when we should be giving him a gold key to the city, probably, at the end of the day, for being such a hero? It is like Batman, though, you know? Uh, he has to be the yeah. hero that, what does he say? I don't know, all those platitudes the Batman mask. makes where he's yeah. like, I'm an, I have to I have to be the one to wear the mask, mm -hmm. you know? I sounded like the Joker when I did it that way. <laughs> Kill you. We got to have a Harvey Dent. <laughs> yeah, we do need a Harvey Dent uh, out there to take the child molesters in so that this man doesn't have to barbecue them. Uh, he ended up under arrest. Police soon confirmed that the 50-year-old was indeed trying to kill four sex offenders, at least two of them. Uh, were convicted. Uh, that's, so that's the thing. This guy's got to make sure he's got some sex offenders that he's, he can't just be barbecuing regular folk and then go like, oops, thought he was a sex offender. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oops, thought he was a child molester, so I lit him on fire. My bad. Uh, the Friendly Village Inn and Motel in Kissimmee. Apparently, I don't understand... He must have done some investigation work. The man was standing outside the room. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I'm trying to find out some backstory because these guys are just at this hotel. He reportedly attacked two other individuals inside a car in the hotel parking lot by ramming his black Ford Focus in the vehicle. He then poured gasoline into that car through an open window. Uh, that's when deputies arrived on scene. So he started getting out of pocket with them. As uh, Osceola County is indeed known for being something of a haven for sex offenders because it isn't within any restricted range of schools, playgrounds, and churches. As such, there is actually a history of registered sex offenders living at the Friendly Village Inn and Motel. Let's start keeping our eyes peeled to the Friendly Village Inn and Motel in <laughs> Kissimmee, Florida. Kissimmee, Florida is where Disney World is. How can that be? Of course it's a haven for sex offenders. Can sex offenders go into Disney World? I know there's quite a bit of security in Disney World, but they're not checking sex offender papers. Mm. No wonder they're living at the Friendly Village Inn. <laughs> They're all going to fucking Disney World. Taking their pick of the crop. Or at the very least, just getting spank bank material out there. Like, ah, I just, I mean, like, yeah. I, does, we need to look into a couple things. Yeah. We need to look into the Friendly Village Inn and Motel, find out what the fuck's going on there, because, and I'm not trying to get all Sam Tripoli up in here, or tinfoil hat style. I'm just saying, that seems like a sus place right there. Also... What is Disney World doing to thwart pedophiles from coming in it? I don't know what it is. And I mean going to it, not coming in it. I mean, hopefully they're thwarting everybody from coming in Disney World. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> physically going to the park. What's stopping a pedophile? I hope they have some sort of uh, defense mechanism. But let us end now with uh, the... Uh, newest segment on the show you know i know people are upset that we haven't had a queef of the week in a while and that's uh we're just getting i'm, I'm compiling all of our old queefs we're getting them back together again and i haven't gotten many new ones where there was a we had a streak for a while but maybe they're all going to the old email josh potter show at gmail.com i'm getting the queefs back together and starting to get my brain back on queef of the week and if again you want to nominate a queef of the week and that doesn't mean the sound or a person who makes a queef that means a person who we can dub queef of the week that also can go to the email josh potter show at gmail.com but let us wrap up with the new segment defending karen and i did notice at that same email many instrumentals coming in for a new defending karen intro and so i'm going through those and we will have a permanent one very soon but rj sent in this gas pump karen let's give it a watch what she's literally mad that i'm sitting in a gas pump 
What is this Karen's problem? Like, what is your problem? There's literally so many pumps open, dude. The fuck? Literally, can you see that she's saying, I won that one? <laughs> like, what is she doing? I literally pumped gas and then was looking up directions on my phone. There were like four pumps open and she literally screamed, I want that one at me. What? That's a grown adult. Listen, this kid, I'm going to call her a kid because she's not acting like an adult. Those gas pumps are public, okay? And there's a service to be done. You pump gas, and we are in a gas shortage right now. Did you know that? So getting gas is something of importance. So this girl, you know, she's, I pumped my gas, and now I'm looking up my directions, lollygagging. I'm sure she's not just looking up her directions. She had time to film her TikTok this Karen, did you see that big Jeep, that big truck? She's got to fill that up with gas. There might not be enough left in the pump. Who knows the circumstances? Maybe there's a sale going on and it could just end at some time. I don't know. We didn't hear all the circumstances. Maybe she has to get somewhere. And this girl's playing on her phone in her car. Respect your elders. Back up. Look up your directions in your own time and allow her to use the pump. Oh, you, she could use the other pumps. Maybe she can't. Maybe it's easier for her to maneuver her large, obnoxious vehicle into just that pump. It's supposed to make it all... Uh, oh, you want to look up your directions so now that, that woman can't drive her ridiculous truck up to the pump that's most convenient for her? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> Another Karen just disrespected. Disrespected. Just trying to do the Lord's work. And I'm sure she, that Karen was filming because I, I hope she notified the police. I oh, hope yeah, she she has a Facebook group somewhere. Th that woman? Oh, yes. Yeah, and she went on. She goes, be on the lookout for this this trollop who's just sitting in her car at gas pumps, taking up space and wasting all of our time. That woman probably had to get home and watch some form of daytime television. Do you understand? Yeah, she was looking for Things housewives. to do. Yes, things to do. Something. She had to get home and watch Ellen. You were depriving her of that. Ellen only comes on at one point during the day. And you're looking at your phone willy-nilly, wasting precious minutes before Ellen. How fucking dare you? How dare you? So when you're out in the world, folks, make sure that you indeed take into consideration. Have a little compassion for the Karens out there, okay? And if you want to send your Karen videos in so that I can defend them, as they should be, by the way, then please to be doing so at the new email josh potter show at gmail.com but thank you so much for joining us once again on the josh potter show episode 33 in the books uh if you are watching this on youtube and you haven't subscribed yet i would appreciate it a great deal just hit the subscribe button it takes no effort at all and it really helps me out a great deal plus it'll populate it in your thing i know some people say they subscribed and it hasn't been showing up at the top of their thing. That'll just come with time as you watch more videos on the channel. Uh, yeah, turn on the uh, bell notification. Yeah, some people have the bell on and they say it doesn't pop up for them necessarily. But I, again, I, like I said, I think once more videos pop up on the channel and you and you spend more time watching it that will naturally occur to the algorithm uh, but if you just listen to the program continue to do so thank you so much uh, nothing has changed for you nothing will change for you and uh, i would appreciate if you haven't rating reviewing and subscribing as far as shows go i will be back from omaha next time we speak so i'll have some stories from there i'm sure uh the door guys out there are all, all very very cool and then uh other than that, I've got shows in June coming up. June 9th, we are going to be at the Tampa Improv. June 10th, we will be at the Orlando Improv. All those shows and those links can be found up on my Twitter, at J underscore Potter, and my Instagram, at Josh underscore Potter. In my bio, there's a link tree with all ticket information, everything for you. Plus, like I said, twitch.tv slash Josh underscore Potter. That's linked up there as well. I've been playing some Wheel of Baseball and having a blast other than that though we will see you next tuesday countries have unemployed young men who are single the likelihood that country goes to war escalates we have cut the share of